Dear students, welcome to the NPTEL course on international trade law and in the first lecture, we will see the mostly the historical aspect of the world trading system and how the world trading system is evolved uh, in, a, in a period of time and also the historical aspects elaborately we will look into how the world trading system has been uh, evolved. Then how the economic crisis from time to time has made or, or the, the, the countries compelled to the economic protectionism and from time to time the trade rules are modified. The colonization have a great impact on the world trade and that also we will look into. And then finally, in this class, we will deal with the emergence of GATT 1947 and the WTO. So, let us have a look into the historical aspect of the world trade. So, the world trade has emerged from time immemorial period. When I say time immemorial period, so the, the, the historians or the, the voyages and those who are traveled from many continent to continent, they have marked about uh, the the their not only they talked about their voyages, their purpose of voyages were international trade. So those who have travelled from Portuguese, or those who have uh, Dutch, or last the British, those who have travelled from their continent to another continent, it is not only for colonization, and the main object of this colonization was itself was trade trade with those countries. Those who are came to these continents as traders, later on they become the masters of those countries. So, you can see the thousands of years of history has written about the world trade. So, this trade history itself has made a vital role in the development of civilizations throughout the world. So, it made exchange of cultures evolution of economies and the rich countries become poor countries and poor countries become rich countries because of international trade. So, we, we talk about the ancient, ancient civilizations maybe uh, from 3000 BC to uh, 500 C. So, this international trade, so we many times we said that trace back to the ancient, uh, ancient uh, civilizations of maybe the Sumerians, Egyptians and uh, Phoenicians. So, the western historians only talked about these uh, uh, civilizations and at the same time. So, the Indus Valley civilization in this part of the world also contributed to the international trade. So, mostly the westerners, those who are engaged mostly engaged in the exchange of goods, spices, precious metals textiles, luxurious items and also we can say that when it comes to the from period to period, all the precious things have been traded or taken away from the colonialized countries to their own countries. So, it is more than trade, but it is started with trade of spices, metal, textiles and precious metals. At the same time, we can see that most of the foreign policies of rulers, even kings were based on international trade. So, I would say that international trade have so strong connection between the rulers and their policies and also the many dynasties has flourished because of trade. For example, uh, the, the, the Han dynasty of the present China in the 3rd century of BC and the famous silk road or silk route, it is not a silk road or silk route. So, it is a highly valued chain uh, uh, a route for international trade from the south to through the middle east and then to the Europe. So, we can see that these silk routes, these trade routes, I would say that these trade routes not only through the land, but most importantly the maritime trade which has flourished from centuries. So, it is very interesting to see that the international trade has started 
with bargains or we can see that the 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 Herodotus, one of the uh, famous writer or historian or we can say international uh, scholar has written in and he talks about a, 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 a group which is known as Carthaginians or Carthage, the emperor of Carthage which was made in the Mediterranean and they have flourished one of the richest, they have flourished as one of the richest countries at that point of time in the world mainly because of trade and they, 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 their trade it is very interesting to note how they traded with the North African. North Africans they are highly uh, you know we can say that highly uneducated or very primitive in nature and those who does not know about trade. So, they traded with these Carthaginians traded with the indigenous people of North Africa. How they did it? The story is very interesting. So, they made a barter trade with this primitive indigenous people. So, the Herodotus wrote it that how they did it. So, the, the Carthaginians will go there in ships and they keep they, they reach the beach and then they will uh, uh, you know they will put uh, a, a smoke a, a smoke uh, uh, as you can see that like uh, which is uh, you know used by the ships. So, a, a smoke signal will be given to the indigenous people and the smoke fire they know that yes these Carthaginians came with their uh, loaded ships with materials including food materials and the day to day materials for these uh, indigenous people. Then these Carthaginians will retreat back to their ship by keeping all the goods in the shore displayed in the shore and they will go back to their ship. Then once they are uh, retrieved back to the ship these tribals or, or we can say that these indigenous people will come and inspect the goods and they calculate the, the worth of or the prices of these particular goods and they, they, they uh, then they keep its worth of gold. So, they calculate the worthiness of trade worthiness of these particular goods and they keep gold equal to us that of the goods which are kept in the uh, shores. And then they again these indigenous people retrieve back. So, again these Carthaginians will go and check uh, these the, the, the quantity of gold which is kept it there whether it is equal whether it is equal or matching with the prices of the goods kept it there. And if it is not done again they will retrieve and the indigenous people will come and keep more gold there and this process will complete once both the sides will be satisfied. So, we are, we are, we are talking about uh, the, the centuries in the 5th century uh, how the trade is made uh, with a primitive indigenous people and these Carthaginians and one of the emperors are at that point of time in the Mediterranean side. So, how they made the trade. So, what we want to say for trade you do not require education, you do not require anything, but trade can be done the trade will be done uh, between indigenous people. Even uh, we know that the only place where uh, the people are not reached is the, uh, the, the islands uh, which belongs to India that is the sentinel islands. So, even uh, I saw that 6000 years of history the people are settled there and still uh, not uh, there is no connection between the mainland or the mainland people or uh, the, the so called modern people and these indigenous people those who are in sentinel islands uh, near the Andaman Nicobar islands. But in between in some point of time they also keep in touch with the people. So, there are uh, you know the histories in between. So, even though they are highly uh, uh, you can say that they do not like uh, the people from outside, but in between sometimes. So, we saw that the people going in uh, in the boats the Indians going in the boats and giving them uh, you know in exchange of coconut. So, they were giving a shake hand to the people, but this is also this is actually uh, uh, you know basically you give something to them which what they uh, required then even the indigenous people recognizes. So, the Carthaginian story is one of the uh, important uh, lesson for international trade even in the 5th centuries. When we come to the international state, so we repeatedly said that the international state started 
uh, in ancient times. And, or, and also we can see that the, the important trade routes, the important trade routes are used by many countries for thousands of years and connecting. Uh, for example, we talked about uh, the Silk Road which is connecting Asia to Middle East and Asia to Europe through Middle East. And China now is revamping the same Silk Route for nothing but for international trade. So, the thousands of years and of, of trade flourish these particular countries, they reach, they make, uh, they made rich because of international trade. So, and also we can see that uh, always some of the dynasties survived because of international trade. And that international trade as I told you has even lead to the colonization we will deal with uh, you know the later. So, the Silk Road is one of the you know the best example of Asia or South I would say that the South Asia which connecting the Asian continent uh, to even to the, the Europe. So, this made not only the, 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 the movement of goods from one place to the other place, it made exchange of goods culture and even I would say that the, the ideas has or, or more importantly the movement of people which we talk about in uh, the service agreement. The movement of people also happened uh, or, or facilitated through this particular uh, silk route at that point of time. So, the, the even as I told you that even uh, not only goods, even technologies are transferred between countries even at that point of time. So, when we uh, look into more advanced stage of uh, 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 the, the trade between countries is starting with voyages or which is known as the age of exploration. The age of exploration has made 15th century to 17th centuries which has made mostly initiated by the Europeans and who the, the famous names include the Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama and other people, those who are from uh, mostly from the European countries, they uh, have uh, you know trade routes they made or they invented the trade routes to the Asia and they trade with Asian countries mainly uh, the spices and other precious metals they traded. And this age of exploration important names which we can find is the Christopher Columbus and Italian voyager. So, who crossed the whole Atlantic Ocean and uh, uh, you know started his journey in 1492, but unfortunately he was not reached, but so Vasco da Gama who reached to the south, to the south for the first time in 1498 and see he, he sailed the whole way from Portugal uh, to uh, the Indian state of the present state of Kerala at that point of time the Calicut and he, he came to the you know our own our own country and the state for the trade of spices especially at that point of time and he made contracts the, with the king of Calicut. He signed agreements with the king of Calicut for trade at that point of time and even signed agreements for uh, the, the, the stock holdings to be kept in the port. So, we are talking about 15th century where Vasco da Gama came uh, to this our, our own country for international trade. So, our own uh, it is it, it's the beginning of not only uh, the exchange of goods or simple trade, it is uh, the you know it is the, the, the era of uh, you can say that the foreigners those who are coming to uh, our own country the India at that point of time. So, you can see that the world trade uh, it is not only really the, the goods and the all kind of uh, uh, the goods where like whether it is uh, silk or spices and also even technologies are taken from uh, the south to west. For example, mainly the, 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 the technology of making glass and then gunpowder and then uh, mainly and one, once upon a time, once upon a time the intellectual property of dyeing of textiles was only with India. The technology was only with India until the Britishers reached. So, they, they have taken away the technology. So, you can see that it is not only the, the goods are traded, even intellectual properties were traded.
traded or taken away from the south to the bus by the bus runners. So, you can see that as, as I told you that how uh, important at that point of time the gunpowder, the origin of gunpowder which was made changed the entire geopolitical landscape because of uh, the firepower and also uh, the, the use of weapons by using uh, gunpowder at that point of time. So, and history uh, which, which talks about the human civilization and also we can see that a rich trade and it is not only rich trade between the countries, it is a rich civilization, the exchange of civilization between countries. So, we talked about everybody westerners only talk about uh, these were empires, the big empires whether it is uh, a Roman empire or Egyptian empire or it is Mesopotamian empire and nobody talks about Indus Valley civilization. And Indus Valley civilization is considered to be one of the most important and the most important culture or civilization which is in, in, in this part of the world, I mean the south part of the world where also there also there is a, a lot of precious metals, it is gold, silver, pearls, tinted gems and all these were traded between other emperors like Egypt and Mesopotamia at that point of time. So, the merchant travelled, merchant travelled from all parts of the world to this Indus Valley civilization and we can we can see the uh, Indus Valley civilization where it is uh, uh, you know uh, situated at that point of time. So, we can see the, the, the present uh, Gujarat and the port and also the most important cities the Harappa and also even Mohenjadaro the two cities which was made at that point of time uh, in this particular Indus Valley civilization which was existed for a long period of time. So, what I want to say is it is uh, not only the, uh, uh, so you can say that uh, it is not only the, uh, the western history, but the south also contributed to this international trade and the people uh, came from uh, not only from Persia, Arabian Gulf, China, Mesopotamia and other countries came to this Indus Valley civilization for many goods, especially precious metals and pearls. And so, we can see that, but uh, these civilizations have been uh, you know uh, so we can say that either it is uh, destroyed or it is vanished in a period of time. So, but it is contributed to international trade. So, with the advent of uh, colonization that is why I, I earlier mentioned about the colonization have a great impact or colonization have a close connectivity with international trade. So, the Britishers were the last one those who came to the south for trade and they came to not only to Indian uh, the other countries like India one of the you know the biggest countries like India and other colonies. So, they went to uh, uh, Africa as well and exploited they came for the trade, but they become the rulers later and they ruled these countries for centuries. So, it is not one century or two centuries, many centuries they ruled these countries and exploited, exploited the resources in these countries and they are exploited these countries and used the basic materials as resources for their, uh, the, their own country industries. So, again there also the trade, so the trade uh, what we talked about uh, you know the Egyptian empires or Mesopotamian empires has converted into the colonial powers. They came for the trade and they become the colonial masters and they have taken away the cotton sales. So, indigo and you can see that all I would say that all precious goods have been transported from their colonies to England. So, you can see and this the, the colonialism as a tool the international trades flourished the international trade has flourished during the British period, even though it is through exploitation. So, international trade have a very important role during the British period as well. Then comes the 16th to 18th centuries, which is known as the era of mercantilism and also industrial revolution. Industrial revolution is post 18th century, but it is starting with the 16th century. So, here you can see that so, the, the exports, so the trade balances uh, between continents, especially the European powers, it is not only British, Spaniards, Portuguese, 
Dutch, all these powers have even fought in between for resources, resources and also for monopolies of monopolizing even maritime routes. So, this monopolization and use of power is for nothing but international trade. Then comes the industrial revolution in the late 18th century. So, the industrial uh, indu especially the industrialization in the western countries has again put the south. So, I would say that the south this part of the world has again exploited for the raw materials. So, which is uh, required for uh, the factories and industries to run in uh, uh, in, in uh, European countries. So, the output has increased these western countries increase their output by using or transporting or I would say that trading the basic materials from the south, they resourced it from the south from their colonies. So, but ultimately we can say that 18th and 19th centuries the international trade has boosted, boosted like anything. So, the demand for the raw materials from the west was at the top during the industrial revolution period of 18th and 19th centuries. So, this industrial revolution added to international trade. So, the volume has increased, the value has increased. So, we can see mostly after the 18th centuries to the 19th, 20th up to 20th centuries, you can see there is a lot of writings on international trade and the most important writing on trade in, in, in is the wealth of nations. The wealth of nations written by Adam Smith who talks about the basic rules of international trade in 1776. So, he talked about the importance of liberalization, liberalization of markets and also the liberalization of markets and international trade. So, he basically argued that the opening of markets will increase international trade and which all the countries will benefit. So, the, the Adam Smith who, who, who talked about who talked about the opening of markets is happened not in 18th century, but 19th end of 19th and 20th centuries the, the markets all over the world has opened up. So, 21st century and the 99 percent of the markets all over the world has opened up and so you can see the writings, the famous economic writings of Adam Smith. So, cannot be forgotten the basic rules of liberalization cannot be forgotten which added to uh, the, the countries compelled to open up their markets and to end their protectionism to some extent. So, here as I told you that the Britishers there uh, reached many places in, in 1600 and there whether it is 1600 to you know. So, they ruled India as well up to 1947. So, this British rule whether it is in Asia uh, in India or in South Africa it has made the Indian scenario of international trade. So, in, in many places for example, even some, some part of India the Dutch people were settled and some part of India uh, the even Portuguese people were settled and they also were doing trade between uh, the Asia, East Asia especially and also from when the 19th century comes definitely the Britishers were taken over by the Americans. So, the, there is a high level of competition between British and Americans during the 19th century. When come, come to this 20th century, this competition has at its peak. So, the, the emergence of uh, United States is a competition to the British Empire. So, these two uh, economic powers. So, the, the competition between these two economic powers also increased the international trade. So, the Americans they concluded treaty between many treaties between many countries for international trade because it was once upon a time it was the uh, it is the more it was the monopoly of the British, Spaniards, French and even Dutch. So, the US entered into agreement. So, in order to 
uh, you know break this particular monopoly the United States has entered into trade agreements with many countries to get their raw materials and other goods from other countries. So, and the 19th century is not to be or known as the century of professionalism. I do not know why it is called it as a professionalism, but I would say that this uh, uh, the, the, the centuries uh, the professionalism and this particular century has very vital role, very vital role in uh, uh, is the, the, in, the, in the international trade. So, here when we, we divide uh, before first world war and then to the second world war and then to 1947 uh, the, the GATT agreement. Here we can see that uh, the, the, the 1913 some of the, the countries uh, have put extensive restrictions. I would say that protectionism or extensive or overarching customs duties on imported goods. This over emphasis on customs duties or over imposition of customs duties end up in the first world war or severe whenever there is a severe economic crisis and there is a war and there is problems with the currencies and even conversion of uh, free conversion of currency into gold is also uh, is one of the reasons. So, international uh, monetary currency exchanges. So, all these liberalized the international trade in the 20th century and then establishing uh, trade between countries, free between countries entering into trade agreements become very common in the 20th century. So, this also added to uh, the, the uh, uh, international trade. So, we can see that in the 19th centuries. So, the, the, we know that from 1600 uh, 1600 to, to 1900 and you know you can say that 19th century end of 19th century uh, and these Britishers and European powers has established their colonial rules all over the country for exploitation. And when it comes to the first world war and there are you know lot of sides which uh, you know form the, the, the first world war which again contributed to the international trade. So, even though there was a devastation after the first world war. So, the, the treaty of Westphalia again made international institutions and also the, the trade has become more popular after immediately after the first world war. So, we will come to the second world war in between. So, we can see the great depression of 1930s. So, the when, when we look into more into the, the first world war period we can change that the India first world war first world war has completely changed the entire course of international trade. And also some of the countries put war restrictions and additional duties and also it took some time to become the normalcy of world trade. And immediately after the first world war again the economic recession has engulfed most of the countries in the 1920s and again the countries comes together for overcoming this economic crisis. So, every country have lot of pressure on the governments to put restrictions or protections I would say that the protectionism of the domestic uh, industries and imposing more customs duties and tariffs increasing the tariffs. So, this become the rule even at 1920s immediately after the first world war. So, this is all these made you know barriers to international trade. So, when we look into the multinational trade agreement under the you know the auspicious of uh, world powers. So, in order to facilitate the international trade the first world economic conference was held in 1927. So, this was organized under the edges of League of Nations, which was formed after the first world war. So, the, the all in important industrialized countries participated in this multilateral trade agreement in 1927 to ease international trade. So, the, the great depression of 1930s after the first world war has made every country to impose high tariffs on goods, restrictions and 
more and more tariffs. So, the mainly the main uh, competitors again, again between the British and America and even we can say the, the, the retaliation from the countries like Canada on uh, US imports. Even some of the countries put additional duties because the unemployment rates increases in every countries. So, more and countries were compelled to put more and more restrictions. So, the, the famous Great Depression of 1930s which is added to the overall scenario of international trade and restrictions on payments, restrictions and uh, uh, import quotas were imposed, then quantitative restrictions were imposed and then additional duties and even prohibitions of imports and exports were imposed by countries which made it very difficult for every country to undergo the international trade. So, the Great Depression has lead to the Second World War. The Second World War has devastated most of the European countries. So, after uh, the, the war, the countries again, the, the, the League of Nations were failed in their objectives and they come out with the new organization that is the, the presently existing the United Nations. Under the aegis of the United Nations and other countries, so again the countries, the industrialized countries come together to discuss about forming international organizations which they can revitalize the countries after the second world war. So, the basically the discussion was to form, so the, the, the uh, discussion was in Bretton Woods. So, the Bretton Woods conference which is known as the Bretton Woods conference which to form the trade organizations, the financial organizations and also the monetary organizations. And this Bretton Woods conference which talks about Bretton Woods conference which talks about uh, the, the three organizations, the famous three organizations which are supposed to form are one is International Monetary Fund that is the IMF and the other one is the IBRD, the International Bank for Reconstruction and the present uh, World Bank Group and then International Trade Organization, ITO which was never formed. So, we will discuss it in the, uh, in, in, in the next lecture more about uh, the, the GATT and WTO. So, what I want to say is that if you look into the international trade, the history of international trade, the countries have a great role, especially the, the western uh, empires and also the, the sourcing countries like south, this part of the world also played a crucial role in international trade. So, there was once upon a time the history was uh, history was very clear and it was robust and the trade routes whether it is the maritime trade routes or the, the silk routes like silk road contributed to the international trade from, uh, from Asia, Asia to the Europe. So, many empires become rich by international trade. So, we will talk about the Indian scenario uh, in, in the uh, next class about what, what was the Indian contribution and also the GATT and other things in the next class. Thank you.